Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Stacy. I am the Dyer Behind Stress Knits Yarn and I have a YouTube channel all about knitting and some gardening, hand dyeing, some climbing sometimes, and I am coming to you with a much requested video. This is the Half and Half Triangles Wrap Tutorial. This is a free pattern by Pearl Soho that has really gone through the knitting community in the past two years. And I have certainly caught the bug. I love it so much. It is one of my favorite things. I will always have it on my needles. I'm currently working on number five in July of 2022. So I am completely smitten with this pattern. And if you love relaxing knitting, meditative knitting, just knitting back and forth flat and garter stitch, and um, you enjoy color play, this is the pattern for you. There are two different sizes, but you can really make this as big or as small as you choose. It is a recipe. Um, I tend to do the largest size. I've only ever done the largest size, which is 260 stitches for me and my gauge, which I use a US 4 or a US 5, depending on whatever I have laying around. And I use about two and a half skeins per triangle. So overall, I buy three skeins of each color. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I need for this pattern. I have also exclusively knit it with Pearl Soho Linen Quill. It is my personal favorite. I've been using this yarn in a lot of patterns. Um, this is one of my favorite colors, honey pink. And let's talk about the yarn a little bit. This is Linen Quill by Pearl Soho, and it is 50% fine highland wool, 35% alpaca, and 15% linen. The linen doesn't get dyed the same way. It doesn't pick up, you, whew, it doesn't pick up dye the same way that animal fibers do. So it creates this beautiful heathery, Let's see, this is rosewood pink, um, this heathery situation that I just adore. So this is the half and half triangles wrap. This is my most recent finished one. I used honey pink and rosewood pink. And it is just this giant piece of fabric. It is two giant triangles connected seamlessly. And it is just such a beautiful piece of fabric that I wear all the time in the fall and winter. Oh, let's get my hair out. <laughs> um, it is just such a beautiful piece. I wear it like this a lot or in my office I will wear it um, like a normal shawl <laughs> just around my shoulders and it keeps me nice and warm. I really cannot sing the praises of this pattern enough so Let's knit one together. Let's start with the materials that you will need for your half and half triangles wrap. First things first is you're going to need a combination that you love of two different colors. You could use one color, but this pattern calls for two. And this, these are both Pearl Soho Linen Quill, which is what the pattern calls for. It is what I've used for all of my wraps. I'm, I really recommend this yarn. It's so wonderful. This is rosewood pink and lavender opal. Next, you will need a stitch marker for keeping place in where you are. And then I suggest having a progress keeper. This is a perfect way to let you know which is the right side of your work. That will become important later on in the pattern. And then a needle that you love working with. I love Addy Turbo Rockets, or just Addy Rockets, I think they're called. And these are my preferred needle. I have them in every size. I tend to use a US 4 for this pattern. I've also gone up to a US 5. I'm a very tight knitter. So go with the needle that you love, that you're going to want to work with for a very long time. And I also suggest that with your yarn color choices as well. This is a pattern for comfort and a pattern for really enjoying the process of knitting. So choose materials that are going to make you happy for months or even years to come. 
Now that we have the materials out of the way, let's get started. So first you are going to cast on the number of stitches the pattern calls for. So either it's 190 or 260, but the beautiful thing about this pattern is that it's really customizable and you can cast on as many as you want, which is why for this tutorial, I'm just going to cast on 30 stitches. So I use the long tail cast on method. I'm not gonna do a tutorial for the cast on method. I'm just going to do it right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Oops. Well, let's just do 28 for this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fine because I don't have much yarn left. So you're going to cast on as many stitches. And then the first row, row one, which is the right side, you are going to just knit to the end of the row, pretty straightforward. So you're going to just knit to the end of the row. The first row is always tricky. I don't know if that happens to you all, but it definitely happens to me. Sometimes my cast ons can be a little tight, but that's okay. So we're just gonna cruise through these first stitches, knitting across the row, nothing special. This is what you're gonna be doing for most of the pattern, <laughs> just knitting. So relaxing, so good. Almost there. Okay, last few stitches. Oh no, okay. <laughs> Always a little tight at the end. All right, so I've knit across the row. Then you're going to turn your work. Row two is your wrong side, and you're going to knit to the last three stitches. So let's do that together. You're just going to knit to the last three stitches. I know some people prefer to slip the first stitch or two to create a nice rolled edge. That doesn't matter to me. I just want to knit. I don't want to think about it. I just want to go. So I don't do that. But if you want to, that is totally up to you. That's why I love this pattern. You can do whatever you want. All right, almost there. Second guessing the number of stitches I cast on now, but here we go. So the last three stitches, then you are going to place your marker, knit one, wrap and turn. So I do the wrap and turn like it calls for in the pattern. So how you do that, bring your yarn to the front, slip the stitch, as if to purl, bring the yarn to the back, slip the stitch back onto the other needle, your left needle, turn your work, bring the yarn to the back and continue knitting. And that is your wrapped stitch. So you wrap and turn and then row three, you're on the right side again and you knit to the end of the row. I don't know if you guys can hear the freighter in the background. I live close to the Detroit River and you can sometimes hear the freight, which is kind of awesome. I just love that sound, it's the best. So we're just knitting to the end of the row. So 
So you'll be knitting to the end of the row on the right side and doing your wrap and turns on the wrong side. So this is usually when I will take my progress keeper. It's always a little tricky, but I will just attach it somewhere on the right side and I will continue to move this so it's at a bit more of a convenient location and there's more fabric below it as I continue. But this way, if I put down, if I put down the project, I can just pick it back up and know which is the wrong side and which is the right side. Okay, now we're on the wrong side, so that means we're going to wrap and turn. So you are going to knit to your marker. there. Okay, one stitch before the marker, knit to marker, remove your marker, wrap and turn. So that's we're going to do it one more time. Bring your yarn to the front, slip the stitch, bring the yarn to the back, slip the stitch to your left needle, turn your work, Bring the yarn to the back. So we've wrapped our stitch and now we're going to knit one, place our marker, and knit to the end of the row. And we're at the end of the row. So now we will be flipping to the wrong side, knitting to the marker. See, this is not as scary as it might sound. Wrap and turns can be a little intimidating but that's okay. Once you get the hang of it, it will just be second nature. And if you prefer German short rows, you can do that. I will link to two tutorials that I think are amazing for German short rows if you would like to follow that method. Okay, so knit to marker, remove your marker, wrap and turn. So we bring our yarn to the front slip as if to purl, bring your yarn to the back, slip back to your left hand needle, turn, bring the yarn to the back, knit one, and place your marker. And knit to the end of the row. And that is the repeat. You will do across all of your stitches until you have two stitches left. And so you are going to meet me back there when you are ready, which might be a long time from now, and that's okay. Oops, and sometimes that happens too. And you just pop your stitch back on and finish out the row. No big deal. So you'll see the rows on this side get shorter as we go along. So I will meet you when you are on the next line of instructions, which is uh, repeat to row four and five, which is what I've been showing you until you have wrapped every stitch except the last two ending on a row five, which is your wrong side no, <laughs> your right side when you knit across the stitches. So then you will meet me back here 
one. It looks more like this, like a triangle. And we will do the next set of instructions together. A little movie magic here. We're switching colors. This is Pale Mushroom. It's also linen quill. So you're coming back to me when you have your stitch marker in between the last two stitches that have not been wrapped and turned. So you will have not wrapped or turned only two stitches. Everything else should look like this. And you will see it is in a triangle because this is a half and half triangles wrapped. So you have two triangles. So we are finishing up the first triangle. So the next instructions are to, let's pick this up. We're going to knit one. Remove marker. Wrap and turn. So if you'll remember, we bring our yarn to the front, slip the stitch purlwise, bring the yarn to the back, slip the stitch back onto your left needle, turn your work, bring your yarn to the back, and knit one. And you have completed the first triangle. Next, you turn it to your um, wrong side. And instead of just knitting across the row, we are going to, we are going to pick up every wrap with its stitch. Uh, it sounds a little daunting, but it's actually not that bad. So you're just going to knit one and then you're going to knit the wrap and the stitch together. So you'll be able to see this little right here, this is your wrap. You're gonna place it on your needles and then you're going to knit the stitch with its wrap. Do it all the way across the row. So you're gonna pick up the little wrap, place it on your needle, knit two together. And you're going to do that all the way across the row. And this is where having some maybe pointier needles will come in handy. Again, these are just Addy Turbos. I think these are turbos, not rockets. So they're not as sharp, but I have no problem doing what I need to do for this pattern. Pick up the stitch, place it on the needle, knit. All the way across the row. When you're knitting the largest size, the 260, this row takes a little bit of time, but by the good part is by the end of that row, you will be a pro at picking up and knitting your wraps. It is, it sounds scarier than it is, right? This doesn't seem too bad. You just pick that up, put it on the needle, knit together pick up on the needle, knit together. This is a very good technique to have in your back pocket. This is also why people will use the German short rows because that is a simpler, less step kind of process, but I love the way the wrap and turns make a ridge. I think it's amazing. We're almost done. Here we go. Pick up the stitch, place it on the needle, knit together. Pick up the stitch, place it on the needle, knit it together. Here we go. Oh, I just love this project so much. It's so much fun even on a mini version. Okay, so just talking to talk. Last few stitches. I'm going to pick up, place on your needle, 
knit together and the last stitch doesn't have a wrap. So you just knit that one. And you're at the end of your first color. So you will break your yarn. And there is your first triangle. Now for the transition. So now we're going to take our color B. This is Bright Flamingo, Pearl Soho Linen Quill, Pale Mushroom. I also added my right side stitch marker. I realized I didn't have it on this sample. So now we're looking at the right side of our work and we are taking our second color. Oops. And now we're going to join it. I have a little tangle. I'm not going to mess with it. Okay, so we are going to join the second color. So row one, right side, right side. And we're going to just knit across the row. Knit across the row. Nice and easy. I love the sound of adding needles when I'm knitting. I don't know if that drives other people nuts, but it is my favorite part of the needles. Such a good sound. Okay. And then you're going to turn your work once you get to the end of the row to the wrong side. And we're going to knit across the row again. Just knit, knit, knit to the end of the row. There we go. Now we are going to start going back across, wrapping and turning. And so this next row, we're going to start the wraps and turns and we are going to start adding stitches to every row. So the rows are going to get longer on this second side. So we're going to turn our work to the right side. I have my laptop next to me with the instructions. Okay, so we're going to knit one, wrap, and turn. Make sure I'm knitting with the yarn. Okay. Knit one, wrap, and turn. Bring your yarn to the front, slip that stitch, bring it to the back, over to the next side. And to get faster, I just bring the yarn to the back as I turn it, and then you just knit one. We aren't adding your stitch marker yet. Um, you can, you can, but I think it's really easy to see where you're at when you're only a few stitches in. So you knit one, and now you have this wrapped stitch. So you're gonna pick up the wrap like we did when we knit across. We're gonna pick it up, put it on the needle, knit two together, and then wrap and turn. On the wrong side, knit to the end of the row. back to the right side. We're going to knit to your wrapped stitch. It's one and two. Your wrap stitch, you're gonna pick up your wrap, put it on your needle, knit two together, wrap and turn. Yarn to the front, slip that stitch. Yarn to the back, slip the stitch back to your left hand needle, bring the yarn to the back, knit to the end of the row. So if you decide 
you want to place your marker now, that's fine, or you can keep going without a marker um, until you decide to get to the end of your session, and then I think it would be a good idea to place your marker. So let's just place the marker together, and so I can show you how that works. So you're going to knit to your wrap stitch, pick up your stitch, knit them together, and then this is when you would place your marker. And then you're going to wrap and turn. Then you're going to knit to the end of the row. And as you can see, the second triangle is already forming. This should be making a square. Let's do one more row together. Knit to marker. Remove your marker. Pick up that wrap. Put it on the needle. Knit them together. Place your marker. Wrap and turn. Bring the yarn to the front, slip that stitch, bring the yarn to the back, slip the stitch back to your left hand needle, turn your work, bring the yarn to the back, and knit to the end of the row. Slip your marker, knit to the end of the row, and that is what you will do across this entire color. That is triangle two. Okay, so you should be able to make it through the rest of the pattern with the information in this video. I am just so excited to share this information with you and I hope it was helpful. This is what your finished wrap will look like on a much, this is a much smaller scale. Um, this is 40 stitches and this is honey pink and turmeric yellow, both pearl soho linen quill. And this is why I love the wraps and turns. I love this ridge that that makes. I just love it so much. So if you do need any clarification for the end, let me just read to you the last two rows of the pattern. Your next row is a right side row. And you're going to, let me show you on here, you're going to knit to your last wrap stitch, which will be this one right here. You're going to pick up and knit that wrap with its stitch and then knit your last stitch. And then you will turn and bind off on the wrong side. And then you will have this. And there you have it. That is the half and half triangles wrap tutorial. I'm sorry it took so long to get this to you, but I hope this was helpful. I will link below the pattern, linen quill, and the two tutorials that use German short rows that I think are incredibly helpful if you want to go that route. Um, I thought I would finish this video with some of my favorite linen quill colorways because I'm a linen quill fangirl. I love it so much. So I wanted to show you some combinations that I love and also um, some colorways that I think are perfect neutrals to pair with any of your colors if you're a little stuck. So what these are both ones that I will be making probably in the next year in 2023. First is this very happy yellow combination. This is, what is this, mustard seed and dandelion yellow. I think it's so beautiful and I also really love the um, two-toned half and half wraps. I've seen people do blues and greens and the pattern photo is in two tones of red. I just think it's 
an amazing idea. Even like a neutral on neutral could be really cool if you're not super into color, but I think this is super fun. And then the one that I'm actually going to be knitting next is turmeric yellow. Yes, turmeric yellow and honey pink. These are two of my favorite linen quill colorways. I could use honey pink and everything and the turmeric is just such a beautiful yellow. So this will be my next one. And then for my neutrals that I think go with everything, um, pale mushroom. I have knit two with pale mushroom. And then I also love wheat flower, which is this beautiful creamy color. Like even this would be beautiful. And then I also think honey pink goes with just about everything. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of those. And I think that's everything. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for encouraging me to make this video. I hope it helps and I cannot wait to hear and see all of your half and half triangle wraps. Please let me know if you have color combinations that you're dreaming of or knitting with below. It's one of my favorite things to talk about and I will try to answer any questions as they come. Thank you again and I will see you next time.